All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of XP Talks. My name is Rami. I work as a client integration at XP Network. Here's with me our CTO, Dima Brook. And today's AMA is XP Network with Shibu Society. Hello, Francisca, and hello, Don. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having us today. It's an honor to us. So, Francisca, <laughs> can you tell us more about yourself? Of course. Um, for those who doesn't know me yet, my name is Francisca. Um, one of the co-founders of Shibu Society. Um, IRL, I'm a business consultant focused in the oil and gas industry. And I'm Don's fiance. We are partners um, in real life and also business partners. Um, let's say I am a mom of a three-year-old daughter and um, I live with health issues. I have high blood pressure. I'm a type 2 diabetic and I'm a, I have epilepsy. So, And I joined Web3 for over a year now. Um, it's an amazing experience since I started. And I joined Web3 to make an, a, a positive impact and doing that by helping and supporting children with disabilities. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Uh, Dima? Yep. Okay, thank you uh, for, for a great story. Uh, we are very happy to have you here and um, hope that your wonderful project uh, will help more people um, cope with the difficulties they encounter in life. So thank you for doing that. Um, can you tell us uh, a bit more about the team? Um, who stands behind the project? Uh, we saw that on, on the website there are three founders. Maybe you could tell us a bit more about um, the founders and um, do you have developers who are not um, enlisted on the website? Yes, of course. Um, the Shibu Society is being led by three founders. Um, like I mentioned, Don's my fiance, he's also my business partner. He's behind the Kibble Token. He's the founder and the CEO of uh, the Shibu Society IRL. He's a branch manager and he's also a former um, inspection supervisor in the oil and gas. And then we have Dave. Dave is also our co-founder and he's the COO of Shibu Society. Dave is from the USA from New Jersey and Don and I are from Suriname, South America. That's a small country right above Brazil. So um, our team, we have a team of eight members right now. Um, like I mentioned, we have joined Web3 for over a year now. And we are here to create, develop, build for our community while also making a positive impact by supporting children with disabilities. Uh, we're also supporting an institution in Suriname and two kiddos from Africa by donating a monthly contribution for their school and healthcare. Um, we do not work with, um, we're, we're not outsourcing developers anymore. Uh, we have had some bad experience uh, before, but we are trying to do everything in-house with the support of friends we have met in Web3 and, of course, our project partners. Cool. That sounds very cool. Uh, so what uh, brought you to an idea of starting this project and uh, how did you come up with it? Uh, I don't know if Don wants to jump in on this question. Yes, no go. problem, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to introduce myself, but uh, I didn't want to butt in, you know. But for those that are listening, hi, hi everybody. <laughs> My name is Donovan, and um, I'm the fiancé of Francisca and also the CEO of Shiba Society and uh, the cable token that we have. Um, so how did we actually, let's say, start it with, with, with the whole project? In a nutshell, um, I was in crypto for around seven years already. I've been uh, buying cryptos, storing some cryptos, and uh, up to date when it comes to the market and how the whole crypto is, uh, how the whole crypto space is. Um, why we started with this uh, project is two main reasons. Before, uh, let me say this. Um, my parents, uh, both of my parents, died of cancer, and before they um, passed away. They were always uh, helping um, this for the local institution with children with disabilities. Um, 
they have been doing it for years already. Um, when I met Francesca, Francesca also um, began to realize and understand why um, my late parents were doing that. And with our crypto project, that is the Shibu, we actually wanted to not only give, uh, break, not only have a project up that uh, gives um, much value and benefits to the holders, but also give back. So you can say it's a 50-50. It's, it's your, as a holder, as an investor, you're getting uh, your profits from our utilities that we have. And also that we are shedding awareness to kids with disabilities and giving uh, charity to these institutions that help kids with disabilities. Um, we wanted to have a charity that um, that is not really thought uh, talked about a lot. Um, you have multiple charities that are going on when it comes to animals, saving trees, etc. We also love those charities, but we wanted to do something that's special, that uh, also had an impact on us, something that we've, we've been doing before we entered Web3, and that is with uh, our project that we can help uh, these kids with disabilities, but also as for the investors that are jumping in into our project, they also get um, the value of the profits of our utilities. So that's it in a nutshell, why we came up with this with uh, NFT project, why we entered Web3. And um, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, thank you. That was very clear. Um, and uh, so maybe you, uh, since you already spoke that there is some benefit for the investors, however, part of, of the investment goes for charity. So can you maybe uh, tell us more about both of those parts? Uh, how, how do um, investors benefit? And uh, what part goes for charity? Maybe you could tell us um, a few um, good examples where you help people. And like, yeah. for example, on your website, I see some videos where you really do help uh, the needy. Yes. So um, how we're doing it is when we, um, let's say last month, we did um, um, such a donation again. Um, we've placed a payment splitter in our mint uh, contract so that 5% of the mints that are going in are going to our Chibu Charity Fund um, wallet. We have a um, transparent wallet that is uh, shibucharityfund.eat, which everything could be monitored from there. When we are sending those, those donations to the children in uh, Africa, we also place the hash rate so that it's full transparent to our holders. When it comes to our the benefits from holding a Shibu, we have right now seven utilities that are active, act, activated on our website. You can read all about our utilities, but I'm just going to name a couple so that you have at least have the idea what value you are getting as a holder. Um, well, first of all, is our Discord holder games. Um, we are giving away 50 US dollars in each, each day from Monday up until Friday to all holders that are participating in our Discord holder game. Um, we have been doing it for the last 13 months already that our, our holders are profiting from just playing in our Discord holder game and receiving these funds back. Most of the holders actually already, when it comes to ROI, return on investment, got that money back from the... Uh, giveaways that we're doing, the raffles that we're doing, the, the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, uh, friend, what is the word I'm looking for? Not giveaway, but um, uh, like community events that, that we're having? Community <laughs> events, thank you very much. Um, yes, but also as a holder, you, all, for instance, the, the way, one, of the pro, one of the utilities is for the, the whales. Um, if you have a certain amount of Shiba, that is the 12th sorry 12 plus um you are the way you are you receive the whale role in our discord and that means also that five percent of the mint sales from the shiba genesis our upcoming alpha and the um, phoenix are actually going to the whale wallet and we also have a transparent whale wallet um, where it all can be monitored you as a whale then have to access to the treasury where five percent of each mint goes to that wallet you as the whale can then decide with all your whales holders because they have a, a separate <clears throat> separate Discord channel. Uh, when they um, want to invest, let's say, the funds into something, maybe they want to buy a, a, a blue chip NFT and fractionalize it or whatever they want to do with it because it's their treasury. They vote through a DAO and uh, that will then be done. It's one of the perks actually also for having a Shibuj. Um There's multiple perks, but not to keep it too long we always say that you can go to our website shibusociety.com um, you can read all about the perks that we have 
And um, you can also on our YouTube channel, you can see our doxing video because we're fully doxed. And you can also see the charity that we've been doing to these institutions um, that we already give charity to because we also documented it so that the community can also see what state the this institution is to who we are donating. You can see the children and you can also see the, the, the packages that we are donating. Because, because something about us is that we're full transparent. Um, we want everything when it comes to our community, they, they could know, they can see, and that's why we also fully dox and have a doxing video and everything. Great. Uh, that was a great answer. And um, th it's wonderful that your uh, NFT collections have so many utilities and uh, everything is transparent and your community members can uh, track um, every transaction and be sure that mm, they're dealt with honestly. Uh, so it's it's great. Um, by the way, I think it's the first uh, time in, in our AMAs when we have a fiance, two, two fiancés participating. Um, and uh, probably it's the first project with charity. So you guys uh, kind of did two things, two, two first things at once, uh, which is amazing. Right. As far as I understand, you have several NFT collections, and I see that some of them are listed in OpenSea, and uh, they are pretty successful. Uh, for example, uh, this uh, Genesis collection has almost 300 users, uh, owners, I mean, um, and uh, more than 1,000 items uh, minted and sold. So can you tell us more about um, each collection, and what's the purpose or what's the utility of each collection? where they can be found and uh, like what what people should expect uh, from purchasing or holding such NFTs. Um, yes. Oh. oh. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> you sure? Yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, guys, we're always like this. <laughs> That's why we're, um, we're being a couple. <laughs> So the first one we have right now is the Shibu Genesis. Um, the Shibu Genesis, before I start with um, the whole collection, let me um, explain this. We all have seen all these Marvel movies, and at the end, you see the post credit scene, right? And <clears throat> that actually excites people, and that ties all these Marvel movies back to one. That same exciting concept we took with our, we implemented in our uh, NFT collection, our collection um, consists of three. That is the Shibu Genesis, that is the female, the Shibu Alpha, that is the male, and the Shibu uh, Phoenix, that is the pup. All three collection ties to at one big storyline. The first Genesis, uh, the first collection that we have out right now is the Shibu Genesis. Um, on our YouTube channel, you can also see the storyline because we have an animated book that actually gives the story of the Shibu Genesis and also gives a little sneak peek of the, the kibble token that we have. And all these three collections all ties back to at the end of the, when we at least minted the, the third collection, all three collections will tie back to one big story with uh, one book. And at the end, we also have, um, you, then you have the female, the male, and the pup. You have the family. And then we enter actually, it'll drop a little alpha is uh, for the game that we have in, in mind. For the, when it comes to the utilities, um, the first one that is we have right now, the Genesis, are getting these um, um, seven utilities. But the main thing about the Genesis right now, what makes the Genesis actually so important, is because the Genesis will be the only one that you stake and that you receive our kibble tokens. Our kibble token is uh, our utility token, and now it's actually in the pre-sale because there's more to it when it comes to our token. But the main thing when it comes to the Genesis is now that we started with the burning process of our Genesis collection. Each month, we are burning 1,000 of these oh. uh, NFTs. And by burning the NFTs, we achieve two things. One, the overall value of the collection. We will increase with that because we have 300 trades and there's a lot of NFTs that haven't been minted, traits that haven't been minted out yet. So we are redu we are uh, increasing the value of the collection, but simultaneously also reducing the kibbles coming back into circulation. Because the whole idea of our project is that you have an NFT, and that NFT slowly turns into a kibble miner. 
How are we doing that? Because most of the, with a, a, little, a little sneak peek of the kibble token, uh, the whole way our kibble token is set up is that um, there's a scarce max supply. We only have 10 million tokens. 60% is locked in the ecosystem. There's 40% left. And each month with our buyback protocol that we have, we have a sustainable buyback protocol that can perform a buyback of minimum of three years. Um, with our buyback protocol, when these, these tokens are bought, they are sent to the Genesis staking platform. You can see it as just sending it to a dead wallet because when it's sent to a Genesis staking platform, nobody can touch these item, these code tokens. Nobody can remove these tokens. Sorry for the... Sorry for the phone because I'm at the office. Yes. No. When uh, these buybacks are performed and these tokens are sent to the Genesis staking platform, the only way these tokens can come back into circulation is by staking a Genesis NFT. So by st we already started burning the first thousand already. By performing the, bur the um, burning of the collection, we reduce the tokens coming back into circulation, giving more value and making the kibble even more scarce. Um, that's the main uh, utility when it comes to the Genesis. When it comes to the Alpha and the Phoenix, we have some special utilities um, for that. We don't want to talk about it just yet, but just to give it a, a quick hint, at the end, when we minted our Genesis, I explained we have a, uh, our game. Our Phoenix and our Alpha, the ones that are coming next, are, will be 3D collections. And... I don't know, Fran, if I should say this or just keep it on the wrap for now, but um, we have a lot of ideas planned for the, the 3D collection that we have. I, Francesca told me not to drop too much alphas, so I'm a bit... Uh, I'm looking at my words. To just, let's, uh, just say, let's just say there will be an upcoming 3D uh, Shibu Genesis, uh, but it's a 3D gamified uh, Shibu Genesis that's coming up, so... That's all that we can say. We are working in the back end with our project partner as we speak. Yes. And it, with the gamified, we mean you, in the metaverse, you will be able to use that issue, same Shibu that you have, you can use as an avatar in that metaverse. Uh -huh. So it means you are building a metaverse. Okay. <laughs> right. No, so no, no. It's not that we are building a metaverse. The the thing is that the three D Shibu that you will mm -hmm. receive will be gamified. That you can use it in the metaverse. And there's all already a game where it can be used. This is one of our part the part of project partnership that we have going on right now. Um, by next week, actually, we're going to uh, announce this to our community so right here in the space we're actually dropping a bit few alphas already that the community doesn't even know yet wow okay but i'm sure there are some community members of yours that now have some insights <laughs> all right it's very cool i think it makes the ma more interesting when you drop some secret information that may impact the future all right so thank you for that. It, it's great uh, to know more about your NFT collections. Um, the question is, uh, are you planning to bridge some of those NFT collections? And if yes, uh, where to? As far as I know, your Genesis collection is currently on Ethereum. Uh, so what other protocols are you interested in and why? Well, um, to tell you guys, uh, we are busy with our marketplace in the back end. We are uh, building a multi-chain marketplace. We, well, you guys, uh, we heard about the XP network, and but we weren't like really informed about it. We definitely know that there was uh, possibilities to be able to bridge your NFTs from one chain to another. So when uh, our community manager, Shibu Brain, uh, told us about the XP network and all the possibilities that we can have bridging our um, from one chain to another, we're very interested um, because we, we really want to implement it in our marketplace because it's a multi-chain marketplace. We do have Web3 artists in our community who are listed their NFTs in the Tezos network. Uh, we have some in the Solana network. So we have different, um, uh, we have community members from different chains. And we know that some community members me personally, I love to have all my NFTs in one wallet, especially um, as safe as possible in a ledger. So when it's when there's uh, possibilities to uh, easily bridge your NFT 
from one chain to another and have that option in our marketplace, it's amazing for our community. We are a community-driven society, so we are building our applications, we are building in the blockchain by what our community needs. And this is something that we need. And we are so happy and so amazed to have met you guys. And uh, yeah, we, we definitely look forward to have this bridging possibilities in our in our marketplace. Right. Fortunately, for such use cases, we have a library in GitHub. It's called XPJS, which stands for XP Network JavaScript Library. And in uh, NPM uh, Package Manager or Yarn, you can find it uh, under the name XP.network, like the name of our company. Uh, you can install it in any front or back end, and uh, you can unleash the full scale bridging uh, from this library without even going to the UI of the bridge. And this is something you could do inside your marketplace. And so you can, uh, you know, arrange uh, the the interface the way you want, the the way it matches your needs, and uh, just all the logic behind it, all the complexity uh, will be done by our our tools. So yes, we'll be happy. Yeah, we'll be happy to help you. We'll be happy to explain how it all works. Show, even though we have documentation, but I'm sure it's kind of complicated. So we're there for you. Uh, to, to make it work. Well, I must say, I did see it, and I love it. It's so easy to use. It's so straightforward. And the documentation that you guys have made, it, it has all the information. I mean, um, even with minimal coding experience, I'm sure you're able to, to install it in your, in your application or in your web application. It's really amazing thing that you guys have built. So props to that. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your kind words. I hope uh, more people will be able to use it. And uh, that's the purpose of, of the product. Okay. So uh, thank you for telling us about your collections and uh, about uh, explaining why you want to integrate with us in your marketplace. Um, another question is, uh, do you feel that there's some competition in the market and if yes, uh, who do you think are your closest competitors? Well, um, our ecosystem is one of our competitive advantages. Uh, we have built an ecosystem that correlates with each other by not only giving the holders various use cases and benefits, but also giving the overall project more value. Um, when it comes to competitors, we believe if you as a Web3 project want to make it and give it the most value to your community, you will have to stop competing against each other and really work together in a form of collaboration. And, and that is what we have been doing. You know, we don't see or we don't feel any competition in Web3 because since we started here, we have been working together in spaces, you know, um, doing collaboration collaborating together to have community events and whatnot. So that's the amazing thing of Web3. You don't feel threatened or you don't feel like there's a competitor somewhere, at least not in the Shibu society. But we have partnerships where we have like um, amazing things for a community. Like one, for example, 10 barrels of our own branded whiskey being aged right now. And uh, next year we ha will have our own medical cannabis plot. And we recently added also a partnership that gives our holders a chance to also receive a full uh, 3D gamified version. So instead of competing with each other, we are working together, collaborating with each other in the good and in the advantages of our communities. It's not only the Shiba Society, but um, community overall in Web3, the NFT community, the crypto space. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my part. <laughs> right, I see. Uh, well, it's very cool that you don't feel the pressure of, of competition. Uh, but still, what do you think are your competitive advantages? Like, why do you think you stand out um, in comparison to other project projects? The holder perks that we provide to our community members, the community events that we're doing on a weekly basis um, makes us stand out a little. Um, the spaces that we, that we host... Um, also, uh, you know, um, we also have, we also have these, um, you mean, 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 you m
Yes, the charity. I'm, oh my God, I can't <laughs> even come to the word. I'm sorry. <laughs> no yes, problem. the charity aspect of our of our project. That's one of our main thing, and that's that's basically one of the biggest reason why I joined Web Three, is to um, bring a positive impact to to the world actually. And I can't do it with myself. I need. We need our community to bring the awareness to. To wake people up and and tell them that this this group of individuals need more health and healthcare, and uh, our kibble token is what we stand most out because if you go into our website kibbletoken.io, if you just read through our our white paper, you would see that we are different than others. That makes us stand out. And if you just join our Discord, you would see that you are welcomed like a family member in our home. And that's us. Right. Well, it really feels that you have a great community. It really feels that you have uh, great purposes uh, behind the project. And uh, it's amazing. So, I mean, I wasn't questioning your your project uh, being sent out. I just wanted you to vocalize it for, for people to realize how different and how good you are. So, thank you for for being so good for, for, for uh, the community and, and the people who you help. Maybe would you like to speak a, a bit about uh, the people who you're helping and uh, how you find them, how you choose them, and uh, like why you help exactly those people? Because I, I know there are many people who need help, but, and I, I think it's a tough choice um, who to help and uh, who should who should uh, cope themselves. Yes, I understand. Um... Well, to, to tell you from the beginning, uh, like Don mentioned about my late uh, parents-in-law, um, beside that, uh, we have, I mentioned also that we have a three-year-old uh, daughter, but before her, we had five miscarriages. Um, I was very, in a, there was a point in my life where I was really depressed as a, as a woman losing her unborn child. And visiting this institution, this local institution in Suriname, Huysa Bital Yara, visiting them, I found love and comfort from children, but they weren't my own children, you know, you still felt love, but it's sad to see that these children, they are a different, they are different and they are so um, very low amount of people that care for these children and there are so many more people that doesn't even know that this institution exists and I was one of them before I started my relationship with Don. So when when I saw that um, you know there are opportunities in Web3 to build and what you can achieve with Web3 and the potential um, the possibilities that you can have by being able to help more people then yes why not. So um, before we help anyone, we mentioned that we're already supporting a local institution because we already have been doing that before we entered Web3. But right now, um, I also mentioned that we already um, choose two children from Africa. Those came from our community. One of them is the young, one of the youngest artists, Web3 artists, and uh, one of them is actually a pupil from our community member, her school. So we got, uh, they opened a ticket, you know, um, and they asked for help. And before doing anything, before making any decisions, um, we asked for a letter. And then um, they need to really tell about uh, the kiddo, uh, send pictures, videos. And um, yeah, then we have a call and then, and then we help start um, doing the monthly contribution. Um, for the for the artists, the Web3 artists that were helping, um, it was basically because his father, his, his parents need more help with, uh, with his health care. And that's why we started with, um, with, helping, with helping them. So there are really basic stuff. Like you really need to, we really need to connect first. We really need to see who the, who the, who the kiddo is, the child, in which um, situation um, the child is a health situation the health um, or what kind of health care does the child need um, how does he eat on a daily basis that that's one of the things too so it's it's really um, going through meeting each other connecting going through 
um, a list of questions before we really go and, and help the person. Yeah, see, the choice must be very tough. And I know that you have a DAO, which you uh, started quite recently. Uh, does your DAO participate in, the, in making such choices or um, only the team members make decisions? So what uh, does the DAO have, uh, have the vote for? The DAO have uh, actually vote over everything uh, in, the, in the community. When we have to make like new choices, new decisions for any project development, then we open up a DAO so the community can vote on it. Um, when we open a new collection and we need like uh, advices or suggestions how, how big or how small the collection size should be, we do it through a DAO. Um, we have not asked our community about the local institution because we were already helping the, the institution from our side. Before we entered Web3, we did ask our uh, com community about uh, the person, the, the teacher that came in and asked for, for help for her pupil. Um, but also the one that, um, that we helped, that's a Web3 artist, we did it, we did it uh, by ourselves, actually, because most, well, most of the costs are coming from our own pockets, not from the community yet, because the mints didn't really come in like it's supposed to. We are getting there, but it's not there where it's supposed to. But if we had like more, more funds in our charity fund uh, wallet, we would definitely open up a DAO and involve our, our community members. But for, you know, these small costs that we are doing from out of our own pockets, um, we just did that Be just because um, it's coming from us. And we're actually also helping uh, two other local children personally. And we haven't even told our, our community about it. It's, it's just because, you know, it's children and you can say no sometimes. Sometimes it's really hard, especially in our country. We have a 400% uh, inflation here. People really are, you know, struggling, taking care of these specific diff types of different of children. So, yeah, um, it's not always involving our communities, especially when it's coming from our own pockets. But yes, if it's coming from the project's money, the project funds, then it is mandatory for the Shiba Society to involve the community and to have them vote, especially when we have multiple children that need help. I also want to just jump in because, sorry, um, I how I'm here at the office, I'm getting some calls from my head office, so sorry if I'm not uh, jumping in to answer the all the questions, uh, but um, I also wanted to add, um, Francisca and I, we had a um, pro problem conceiving a child. We had um, multiple miscarriages. We, we were going to talk because we're transparent to our community, so we are, we are open book. When you have... Uh, in, uh, let's say wishes for it for for a child, and constantly it's um, your, your your partner is getting pregnant, but um, complications you constantly lose a child. You get a, a a certain kind of extra love of help for helping children. Um, God actually blessed us that uh, three years ago we it finally happened. We finally got our first child. That's our, our three year old daughter now. But before that. All these things kind of um, gave us a soft, soft spot when it comes to children. When you, when you can't have children by your own and there's a way that you can at least help a child that is actually having a disability because life is already hard. Imagine now that you're a child and you have a disability and you can't perform the things that you normally need to do. It, has, it hits differently and that's why we actually wanted to involve this um, charity also into Web3 because with Web3 you get to know you get not only to know more people but you get to have a community with a community together we can I would say we can achieve anything but we can achieve a lot and working together is uh, the best way when it comes to Web3 so with our project and w with our backstory why we ex specifically chose for children with disabilities because we were having problems to having children and we were then helping this institution. It's like we can not have kids, but at least we can help the kids that are having um, an, 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 a, a trouble having a good life because of their disability. And that's why we started it and that's what dro drove us then further to also bring this into Web3. 
Thank you for sharing. I know it's very personal for both of you. And uh, I actually understand you. I won't uh, give out the details, but I understand you very well, guys. And uh, I'm completely with you. Uh, besides, I don't know if you guys know, uh, the, the core team of uh, XP Network are from Israel. So here in Israel right now, we are between two big holidays. Uh, last uh, weekend, it was uh, the Jewish New Year. And next uh, weekend, it's uh, the Judgment Day. And between those two holidays, uh, the Jews believe that the God makes a choice who is going to live the next year and who is going to die. He opens the Book of Life and uh, looks at all the behavior this person had before. And uh, this is the scariest week in the year because the decision is made. And th this is the time when uh, most of the Jews make a, a lot of donations to different charity funds um, in order to get a chance to keep living and uh, to be written in the book of life and not be taken away from it. So I completely <laughs> relate to what you're saying. And right now in Israel, it's the time of big uh, donations to, to the funds. Uh, the funds probably make the most uh, during the year, during this week. So maybe uh, because you're, you're working for such a good cause, it would also probably be interesting for you to kind of interact with the Jewish community uh, because especially in those periods, they'll be very generous, just as a piece of advice. In general, Jews are very kind people and uh, when they see that someone, someone needs help, um, usually they help because they know how, how hard it can be. So wow. thank you for... Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the next uh, Sunday, I think it's gonna be. It's called Yom Kippur, the 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 day of the day of uh, maybe choice. So basically, God will choose who will live and who will die, and uh, so He makes the choice during the week, and on Yom Kippur He puts a signature, like that's according to the beliefs. And uh, this is the scariest day um, during the year when Jews pray because their fate is decided. They don't eat all day, they don't drink, don't wash, only pray. And it's the only day in the year when Jews pray on their knees. Some, pray some prayers, not all the time. Usually Jews don't stand on the knees, they, they stand on the feet because that's the scariest day. So... Especially now, during this week, this is this is very special for any Israeli or any anyone who's Jewish. Right. Uh, by the way, there's a huge Jewish community in New York. Uh, several million uh, Jews live there. And uh, maybe you would be interested also to involve them into your charity business because they will be, it will do good for them because they anyway, anyway do charity. And it will do good to, to um, the people you help. So it can be mutually beneficial, and uh, then your fund can grow, and then you can it could involve DAO uh, for making choices who is going to be the next uh, person who you are guys going to help. Oh, this is really amazing! Thank you so much for sharing that with us because I personally didn't have, I didn't know about this really, but um, I will definitely um, check back with you in the back end and have more information about this because um, yeah, when it as long as as it's helping people and uh, more mostly children, then yes, I'm I'm down for it. So I will uh, contact you in the back end for more information. Thank you so much. <laughs> Not at all. Um, also, I can tell you that in general, Israel is probably the best country for kids. Everybody loves kids here. They're in the center of attention. They're the major um, value in life. Um, you have different playgrounds everywhere, which are free and, and very cool. Everything is for kids here. Like if you go to Europe, you will see it's a, it's a place for adults and, uh, you know, maybe even elderly people. In some places, you don't have any facilities for the kids. But if you come to Israel, you will see absolutely the opposite. Everything is for the kids. So also, if you, if you ever want to come, uh, you, you will find a lot of interesting stuff here. So I'm, I'm saying this yeah, because, because you're so, kids are so important for you as well. 
Yes, definitely, 100%. And thank you so much once again. I will put Israel on my map. You heard that, Don. We're going to Israel. I really, I know that you have beautiful people over there, beautiful uh, places, but I didn't know about this part. So thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, of course, you have to live here to know all this stuff. Um, Also, Israel is, you know, it's a crossroads of cultures, of times, of the world, of, of different worlds. Um, even today, not only in the ancient times it was so, but even today. So if you have a chance ever to come here, do so. For example, um, when the humanity was leaving Africa and was spreading uh, across the, the uh, planet, they went through Israel. And it was their first stop outside Africa. And you have caves um, where... Uh, you can find settlements of uh, Neanderthals and Cromanians in the same caves. They lived together, actually. They had babies together. So it's a, there are like two or three caves in the world where it happened, and one of them is here. Um, just come. Just come. <laughs> Let me know that you're here. I'll tell you <laughs> more. This, this AMA is not about this stuff, <laughs> so we better get down to, uh, to business. Right. So speaking about, <laughs> about your company, you have a very uh, elaborate roadmap, and you um, already um, shared all the steps that you took uh, to get where you are today. Uh, so can you tell us more about what are we going to expect um, in the nearest future? I also saw that your roadmap is like up to 2025, right? So you have big plans. Yes, definitely. Um, well, for now, we already have activated like seven utilities, like we mentioned, from the 10 that we have. Um, of the Genesis collection. Um, we also activated two utilities of our cable token. Next up, we have the launch of our cable token and expand our community from NFT holders only to also token investors. Um, next, we had our uh, serum drop with the recent partnership that we, we made. We will give the whole community the opportunity to have their own 3D Shibu instead of just 300. Uh, and uh, next is our Alpha Collection, which is scheduled, which is scheduled for um, December, but uh, that will be postponed to next year because we want to keep the focus on the Genesis and the Kibble token for now. Um, the Alpha and the Phoenix Collection will be a 3D collection um, that you can also use as an avatar in the metaverse. Um, Then we built more use cases and integration uh, for a kibble token. And um, as you can see, we have uh, have so much in store, actually, for our community. Um, We did have have, uh, updated our roadmap and we have set it to 2025. But um, as of our NFT collections, the, the Alpha and the Phoenix collection, Like I mentioned, we are a community-driven society. So with the suggestion of our community, we will um, know for sure whenever, in which month or which day we will um, uh, launch it and also uh, the size, the the supply of it for each collection. So yes, so visit our website, sheepsociety.com. We have on the front page our roadmap. You guys can read through it. Uh, what we already have achieved is also still there. So you can really have like uh, a summary of our project uh, since we started the Web3 in our website. Yeah, thank you. Um, what do you think about the current uh, situation um, in the NFT market? And uh, where do you think we're going to be in three or five years from now? The NFT market is witnessing its first bear market right now. Um, it hasn't witnessed a, a bear market before, but analytics are showing that we're actually um, ending the bear market um, shortly and are starting a new bull run. And with institutional money that is coming into crypto right now, or at, at least when the ETFs are approved, it will be a bull run that has never been seen before. And um, yes, the NFT market may be down right now, um, but... Just when the bull run starts, if I'm looking at an, an, an analytics, because next year we also have the Bitcoin happening. So we have two things that are happening next year. We have the Bitcoin halving that also has a great impact on Bitcoin and the rest of the altcoins. But we also have the 
um, the ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs, and also one Ethereum ETF up till now that are also being filed. So just imagine that the amount of money, institutional money coming into crypto will make this a big bull run. So um, what I think of the situation right now, yes, it's a bit down, but I know that it will kick up, it will take up when um, this adoption actually starts. And with these ETFs coming in and everybody, institutions, all getting ready to jump into crypto, we'll know that um, the bull run will be a bull run that has never been seen before. So for those that are sitting on the sidelines right now, I would say to dollar cost average DCA into your famous crypto and NFT projects right now, especially the ones that have withstand the bear market, that have uh, built through the bear market and have shown that even though that the market is a bit volatile and the NFT market is a bit down because there it's witnessing its first bear market, um, these projects are actually the projects you can keep an eye on and uh, uh, when it comes to investing, because if they could withstand a bear market, especially this long crypto winter that we've been having, you can imagine when uh, that they will thrive when the bull market starts. Yeah, I, I'm very happy that you're so enthusiastic about it, and so are we. Um, I'm sure that you're right, that uh, you'll have to enter the industry when it's not in its best times, and then when it rises, you rise with it. So that's that's a great idea. Um, do you guys have any questions to us as a bridge? Um, I don't have a question from my side, though. Um, everything was uh, clear uh, when we had our meeting as well. Um, you guys are amazing. I, I like I mentioned, I really love the um, the bridging uh, method, the application that you guys have built. I love it. It's so easy to use, to install, to have it in your web app or your application. And like I mentioned, all the information is there. Um, up until now, I don't have question, but maybe and I know for sure that if I have a question, I can contact you guys in the back end. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, then. Uh, so as we're approaching a one hour mark, um, what would you say uh, to the listeners of this AMA who are present here with us or who are going to listen to this um, in a recording? Um, what, where is the best place to find information about your project? Um, which channels are the most active for your project? Uh, where do you uh, give uh, more information about your uh, pro progress? So where, where should people track you? Um, just tap on our uh, PFP and then you'll see our Discord link in our bio. We do have a Telegram, uh, a group chat for uh, the Kibble token. But in the Discord, you can meet the whole team. You can meet the whole Shibu family. We have all the information in the Discord. Um, our official links are there. Uh, any, in, any question that you might have, any any suggestion or advice that you have for us, um, just just reach out to us in the Discord or um, on the Twitter uh, DMs. We also have uh, a website for Kibble Token, that's kibbletoken.io. We have uh, a website for Shibu Society, that's a Shibu Society, um, dot com. Just just read about us, Google us. Um, you can meet, you can see us in the YouTube channel. We did our doxing video three months after we launched our project on Twitter, um, we had uh, we were fighting scammers, actually. So we thought, you know what, we're going to dox ourselves just to, to, to let people know that we're real people behind the PFP, you know? And um, that's what we did. And if you want to meet, our, meet us, just go in the YouTube and then you'll see our video. So yeah, that's from my part. And thank you guys so much for having us. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your valuable time. It's an amazing space and it's really great to meet you guys uh, in the early stage of our journey. Actually, Fran said it perfectly. I have no other words to, to add. Um, thank you guys for this opportunity. And for those that are listening or listening to the space after um, are listening to the recording after the space. Francisca has explained it already. All the information is on our website for Chibi Society. You can go to shibisociety.com. Cable token is cabletoken.io. And jump, jump in our Discord. Get to know our community. 
If you grab a Shiba right now, the price of one is 0 0.015. It is around, but gas fees may be around $25. But if you grab a Shiba, you're already participating in our Discord holders game. When you come into our Discord, use the collab plan to get your holders role, and then you can start participating, and maybe you can win, be the one that wins a 50 US dollar in ETH from Monday up until Friday. So uh, that's it um, about actually Cable Token and the Shiba Society. We, I, we also want to thank you guys again for this platform to let the people know what we stand for, what we are all about. We are here over a year in the space and what, if, what we've been building and what our plans are for the future. So thank you again, guys, once again. And we are here to stay. The Shiba Society is here to stay. We work with real, legit people. Our project partners are real people and XP Network is one of them. We love them. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming. You guys are wonderful. Uh, thanks for starting such a good project with such a noble cause. And I hope um, eventually you will have a huge community uh, who will be as warm as they are now. And uh, more people will uh, get help uh, from such wonderful people as you guys are. Okay. Thank you so uh, much. Thank yeah, thanks for coming and goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Rami. Bye, Francisco.